Hello, everyone. My name is Agent Paul of MTF Delta 7, aka Bookkeepers. And the SCP we'll be re reviewing today is my favorite SCP SCP 1230. Object class safe. Special containment procedures. Now, the former containment procedures are here, so I'm going to review them and then we will continue with the current containment procedures. Formerly, SCP-1230 is to be kept in a secure storage locker at Site-12. Access requires minimum clearance 2 with, an, with authorization and supervision by clearance 3 research and security staff res respectively. Supervising personnel are not to view SCP-1230's contents. Personnel accessing SCP-1230 are required to submit written accounts of dream experience of dreams experienced within 48 hours of access. Now that is the former containment procedures, but as of an event that is noted as addendum 1230A, here are the current containment procedures. SCP-1230 has been relocated to a secure storage locker behind the desk of Site-12's main library. Access is available to clearance to personnel deemed to be in satisfactory psychological condition by Site psychiatric staff. Personnel act accessing SCP-1230 must submit written accounts of their dreams within 48 hours of access and submit the follow-up psychological examination. A lot of this stuff will make more sense once we get to the end of this documentation. Description. SCP-1230 is an unlabeled green hardcover book with no apparent exceptional qualities. When SCP-1230 is opened, it displays the phrase, a hero is born on the first page viewed, while all other pages will be blank. Resetting once the book is closed. This has no obvious effects at first, but upon falling asleep, the reader will dream of a fantasy world where they are the protagonist of a troubled land. Dreamers are completely aware and all senses work just as well as when awake. Results vary depending on the imagination of the reader and are mostly attuned to fantasies of adventure that the reader would enjoy. In the mind of the reader, these dreams have been documented to last anywhere from 45 seconds to 200 years, as seen in experiment 1230-3 and experiment 1230-5 respectively, but in reality, the reader will usually never be asleep longer than they would normally. Upon awakening, the reader is able to remember every aspect of their dream in detail. In SCP-1230 induced dreams, there is always a character called the bookkeeper, as of now addressed as SCP-1230-1, appearing as a bearded man in a green cloak who claims to be the personification of SCP-1230 himself. SCP-1230-1 has reported to be very amicable and helpful towards dreamers. It, is, it has stated that it enjoys creating these fantasy scapes and always tries to shape them in such a way that the dreamer garners the most entertainment out of it. It has expressed sorrow when the dream comes to an end and it asks the dreamer to please visit again soon. Discovery. In a small bookstore located, the shopkeeper had no recollection of owning the unlabeled book, but attempted to sell a story to local newspapers about a magical dream book. The Foundation was able to dispel the story as a hoax, and SCP-1230 was confiscated. Experiment 1230-1. Doctor, in an attempt to test its effective range, opened up SCP-1230 and boarded a flight to his hometown of... where he spent the night at a hotel. Upon his return, Doctor... Reported that SCP-1230-1 appeared in his dreams and explained that once you read A Hero is Born, the dream is immediately implanted in your subconscious, after which SCP-1230-1 is able to manipulate it remotely. Doctor expresses appreciation for SCP-1230-1's cooperation. Experiment 1230-2. Camera was set up above SCP-1230 and using a mechanical arm, the book was opened. All pages were revealed to be blank and it seems SCP-1230 is, is only effective when opened by beings that are able to have dreams. SCP-1230-1 explained to a subsequent dreamer that it is actually only able to affect beings with quote-unquote an imagination, and that most creatures such as animals would not be affected. Experiment 1230-3. One D-class was instructed to open the book, and after much assurance, reassurance that his experiences will only be dreams, order to immediately find a way to kill himself in the dream. The subject was asleep for merely 45 seconds before he awoke with a start in a nervous sweat. 
He reported being at the summit of a volcano called the Ashen Spire, on a quest for Caladius, the Blessed Blade. When asked how the subject knew the names, he stated, It's like I knew them all along. He apparently left, leapt into the volcano and felt an intense heat before awakening. D-Class requested permission to give it another go. Request was denied. Experiment 1230-4. One D-Class was instructed to open the book and attempt to non-fatally injure himself in the dream. After six hours, the D-Class awoke and reported that he was able to feel a numbed sort of pain where it was never so intense as to be unbearable. He also reported meeting an elderly cloaked man who asked him why he was harming himself, but thanked him for not immediately killing himself like that other rude fellow. And this next experiment is why uh, cla clearance 2 with satisfactory psychological condition is required to use SCP-1230. Experiment 1230-5. Professor filed a request for access to SCP-1230 and was quickly permitted, given his level 4 clearance. Staff members recalled that Professor was almost visibly shaking with excitement, and some reported that Professor was an avid f fan of tabletop and role-playing games. Surveillance shows that Professor opened the book, read the phrase, sat down beside the desk, and promptly fell asleep. Staff members were alarmed when Professor did not awake after 15 hours and alerted security. The on-site medical staff were able to confirm that Professor was still alive and in good health. After approximately 24 hours since falling asleep, Professor began to move, reported to have slowly raised his head and looked around the room, appearing deeply confused. Security entered the room to ensure he was all right, to which he replied, where am I? He was sent to medical where staff explained where and who he was, and several minutes later, Professor appeared to have regained his memory and excused himself to the restroom. When 15 minutes passed and Professor had not exited, a nurse entered to find he had hung himself with his belt. A scribbled message on the wall revealed his last words, I can't go back to this. Doctor went to ask SCP-1230-1 what had happened, but upon opening SCP-1230, all its pages were soaking wet with the same message on every page. I'm so sorry. I never intended this for this to happen. I just wanted to make people happy. Repeated over and over. SCP-1230 remained in this state for three weeks, and its desk had to be wiped dry bi-weekly. In an attempt to communicate, Dr. placed a sticky note inside of SCP-1230 with the statement, I'd like to talk to you if that's all right. The next morning, Dr filed a report about a dream he had concerning SCP-1230-1. And that here is that report. It is classified as Report 1230-14. And this is from the perspective of Dr. Upon falling asleep last night, I dreamt I was in a dark void. There was a street lamp, and underneath it was SCP-1230-1 sitting in a puddle. His cloak was visibly soaked, and he was sobbing profusely. I remember our conversation. Bookkeeper, is that you? My god, man, where are we? I, I couldn't think of anything to make for a landscape. Bookkeeper, what happened that day? Why did Professor kill himself? We have to know your side of the story. He, he had such an active imagination. I was able to create a vast and beautiful universe for him, and it was obvious that he had wanted a life like that for so long. He conquered foul beasts, saved princesses. He built kingdoms and even raised a family. But he never wanted to leave. He delved so far into this fantasy world that I soon realized he preferred his dream world over the real, real world. I reminded him that this was all merely a, an illusion, but he wouldn't listen to me. He stated that if, if he ever could leave, was forced to leave, he would immediately end his life. I tried to keep him happy for as long as I could. Bookkeeper, how long was the dream from his point of view? Two hundred years, Doctor. I did my best, but I could only hold on to him for 200 years. As sweet as dreams may be, eventually, we all have to wake up. I awoke almost immediately. I can't believe he spent 200 years in his dream. I'm astounded by his foolishness, but it's a shame to have lost such a brilliant mind to his own delusion. And that is the end of Report 1230-14. Shortly after the report was filed, surveillance showed Dr. slipping another small paper into SCP-1230. A few days later, SCP-1230 began showing its usual, A hero is born reading once again. When asked what the note said, Dr. declined to give a detailed comment, simply stating that he gave it some friendly advice. And here is addendum 1230-A, which if you 
do not know it refers to the updated containment procedures during initial testing scp 1230-1 asked streaming personnel if it could be relocated to an area with many books preferably fiction so that it could think of even better ways to construct its fantasy escapes after numerous experiments were performed to ensure that SCP-1230 posed no threat, the request was accepted, and SCP-1230 has been relocated to twice Site-12's library. And that's it for this document. Thank you all for listening. Like I said, SCP-1230 is one of my favorite SCPs. I actually have it right here with me while recording this. And a hero is born. Well, guys, uh, it's getting pretty late for me filming this. Thank you all for listening. I've got an, an adventure tonight to go on, and I will see you next time with the next SCP.